across to the Rockies and down from Minnesota, 2,500 miles to New Orleans, carrying all the rivers that run down two-thirds the continent, the Mississippi runs to the Gulf. The Mississippi River ain't what it used to be. In many ways, the river is broken. Follow me and we'll stay dry. Yeah. If you watch your step on the canal. These engineers have a plan to fix the river, but it will cost billions. It almost kind of makes you feel uneasy because you're walking over the Mississippi River. So what's wrong with the Mississippi? To answer that question, we need to take you down to the Big Easy. New Orleans is only here because the Mississippi River built it. Specifically, river mud is what built southern Louisiana out of nothing thousands of years before Bourbon Street. It's on its way to the Gulf of Mexico. Today, the river is not building land like it used to. It's being stopped by levees that keep New Orleans safe, oil pipelines that boom the economy, the land is sinking, the sea level is rising, and Louisiana is quickly disappearing. Over the past 80 years, Louisiana has lost 2,000 square miles of land. How much is lost every day? Uh, well, the, the, the stat we're using now is a football field every 100 minutes. To find a solution, scientists built this exact replica of the Lower Mississippi. Using airborne laser scans and satellite data, robots cut every single detail into the scale model at Louisiana State University. This is about 190 miles of the Lower Mississippi River. Reduced to the size of two NBA regulation basketball courts. Engineer Rudy Simeo is working on a radical idea, cutting controlled holes into the banks of the Mississippi River here and here so mud can spill out and build new land. This gate will open, water and sediment will flow down that channel. Natural deltas will be built, land building will happen out in this area here. On this map, the river is wet, the marsh is mushy, and the mud is represented by these black specks. Everything works the way it does in real life. Only we remain as giants. How tall are we right now? So given the vertical scale of this model, our heads would be approximately 2,400 feet above the surface. So we're as tall as a single engine airplane would fly. Correct. And we're gonna take off, and we're gonna turn left. And what's our altitude right now? 1,500. So this is a little lower than our head would be on that map. Yep. But this is for real. This is the real yeah, thing. Yeah. David Muth is with the National Wildlife Federation. That's the lower ninth ward below us right now. All of this flooded in Katrina. Flying just minutes outside of New Orleans, we saw the ground washing away. If you look at these marshes from the air, you see they're pockmarked, there's water. What's that from? From subsidence and deterioration. There's no new sediment coming in. So that's the last stage before they break up and disappear. This is where the marsh desperately needs mud. Remember that plan to cut holes in the banks of the Mississippi? Right back over our shoulder there. Oh, this is it right here. This is where those holes will go, allowing river mud to spill out and, in theory, build new land. It is all going to happen right here. Not everyone thinks that is a good idea. My name is Robert Campo. I own this oyster boat, I have another oyster boat, and I also own Campo's Marina right here in Shell Beach. 116 years ago, Robert Campo's grandfather started farming 1,500 acres of some of the finest oyster ground in the world, shrimp too. The balance of salt water and fresh water makes it all possible, but that is changing. This place is, is golden, man. It's golden. And they're turning it into complete crap overnight. Take it easy there, Barney Oakfield. The oysterman is upset over a state <laughs> plan to redirect Mississippi River water in an effort to rebuild this disappearing part of the country. The marsh has been eroded away by sea level rise, naturally sinking ground, 
and these long, straight canals down there. Those are those straight lines that were dredged for oil and gas exploration. Those canals are just highways for the salt water. Messing with the delicate balance of fresh and salt water here. David Muth with the National Wildlife Federation says mud could fix Louisiana's land problem. And there's plenty of mud in the Mississippi River. So right back there is the proposed cut into the Mississippi River to let that silt and all sorts of organic material pour out and build a new delta. And that would spill more fresh water into Robert Campo's golden oyster bed. And he has reason to be concerned. This used to open to the Gulf of Mexico, right? Absolutely, straight out, 20 so you miles. you salt water coming yep, in? Yep, yep. But no more? No more. Hurricane Katrina nears its third landfall. In the years after Hurricane Katrina, the Army Corps of Engineers dammed off this massive canal known as Mr. Go. The year after that dam was put in, the dam dammed us. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Still getting some very, very strong northerly winds. The plan was to protect New Orleans from incoming storm surge, but cutting off the salt water had unintended consequences. I'm going to show you what fresh water does to a salt water estuary. It's catching what used to be oysters here. It's all dead shells now because of fresh water. You're looking at dead oysters. This, and at one time was just, man, this was just a, this was the place to be. It was incredible. Not one, not one, not one live oyster in this, in this whole dredge. But that's a huge industry right there. It is a big industry. It's a very important industry and nobody wants to see it go away. David Muth tells us fishermen will have to move to saltier grounds after this fresh water comes pouring in. People like Captain Campo will have to adapt to the changes. So some places where you could get shrimp in the past, you might not be able to get it after this project is built. That's correct. There'll always be shrimp. They might be somewhere else. How much more can we adapt to? If we adapt to any more, we're out of business. Yet moving an operation like this is really easier said than done. You don't just move the boat. These oystermen, crab and fishermen, they have a whole community set up here. Their homes are here. Their docks are here. Their gas stations are here. You would have to move all of this to the other location that's good for oysters, crab, and shrimp. Like I said, the shrimp industry, the crab industry, oyster industry. You're talking about billions of dollars a year in industry that's going to be lost. Quick, which state is this? Easy one, right? Louisiana has a unique shape, but nearly every map you've seen of the Pelican State is a lie. Louisiana isn't that shape. It is this shape. This is what the state really looks like. Decades of sea level rise and sinking soil have literally wiped huge chunks right off the map. Over the past 80 years, Louisiana has lost 2,000 square miles of land. How much is lost every day? Uh, well, the, the, the stat we're using now is a football field every 100 minutes. It's interesting, if you look at a map of Louisiana, it's completely different shape. Absolutely, the maps have not been updated. Saving Louisiana will cost billions, and in a cruel irony, Everybody up. this deadly oil disaster, the one that became a blockbuster film, could help fix this disappearing state. From one of the four seats in this Piper Comanche, you can actually see the state washing away. Why is there one color and then another color? So that's That's Mississippi it. River water mixing with the Gulf. Wow! Centuries ago, nature built southern Louisiana using mud that flows down from states as far away as Minnesota. But times have changed. The National Wildlife Federation's David Muth showed us how the river is now heavily levied for flood safety. But that means much of the land building mud just flows out into the Gulf. 
Yeah, so you see the oil and gas production platforms out there? Oh, sure. So that's a little oil field. Oil pipeline canals divert the mud as well. Wednesday, the focus of the oil disaster. It's been nearly a decade since the BP Transocean Deepwater Horizon well gushed more than 100 million gallons of crude oil into the Gulf of Mexico for 87 days. 11 men were killed when the platform exploded. Fast forward past years of environmental cleanup, legal battles and settlements with several states and individuals, and Louisiana finds itself with a massive amount of restoration cash, at least $8.7 billion for this state alone, where Billy Nungesser is lieutenant governor. This is a lot of money that came from the BP settlement, billions of dollars. God help us if we waste it. God help us. We'll never get this chance again. One plan is coming together here at Louisiana State University, where these engineers want to build what amounts to a pair of $2 billion holes in the banks of the Mississippi here and here to let mud flow out and build new land. And to test their theory, they have built this working water flowing scale model of the river. Water and sediment will flow down that channel. Natural deltas will be built, land building will happen out in this area here. It is all gonna happen right here. So basically, you can turn it on when there's a lot of mud in the river, right. but then turn it off when it's just going to pour water into this area. That's correct. Back on soggy ground, the plan isn't going over very well with the fishermen we talked to. Cutting holes in the river and dumping fresh water into this saltwater estuary or brackish water estuary is not going to build land. Oysterman Robert Campo knows the land is washing away. Nobody questions that fact. The issue is how to spend the money to restore one of the best fishing spots on Earth. The way he sees it, river water will make this place not salty enough for these brown shrimp to survive. Captain Campo would rather see the state essentially vacuum the riverbed and dump out land where it's needed, something known as a dredge, and they've done it before to rebuild these barrier islands. But it's not a self-sustaining process like diverting the river to build new deltas. My belief is that diversion won't build enough land. And let's say I'm wrong and it builds a couple feet of land in the next five years. And then we have a hurricane and it washes it out to sea. This is a map of places you may never hear of again. Places like English Bay, Louisiana, Point Fortuna, Louisiana, Grace Point, Louisiana, Locust Pond and Raccoon Island, a total of 35 locations that have been, quite literally, wiped off the map. And they're gone now because it's just one big body of water. There's no there there. There is no there there. Yeah. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, had no choice but to remove these sunken lands. Because of climate change, sea level is rising more rapidly. So trying to get back what we lost is a losing battle. The key now is to strategically build and maintain land. Sounds like a new New Orleans. Uh, a new New Orleans, a new coastal Louisiana, absolutely.